und weil wie immer äh, auch äh, fremde Menschen eingeladen hat, hier zu leben, stelle ich euch heute Blago West vor. Er ist ein äh, bulgarischer, professioneller Badmintonspieler, lebt jetzt zurzeit in Wien, obwohl er sehr, sehr viel herumfährt. Er spricht lieber Englisch als Deutsch, also ich hoffe, ihr verzeiht mir, wenn wir auf Englisch sprechen. Äh, wenn was nicht verstanden wird, einfach die Hand heben, dann übersetze ich gern. And, um, das letzte äh, große äh, Tournament, äh, das äh, Blago gemacht hat, war jetzt in der Ukraine. Und daher, vielleicht ist es schön, um mal zu hören, was er dort erfahren hat. So, Blago, what, what were your experiences when you were in Ukraine? Well, first of all, thanks for inviting me here and uh, thanks to all of you for coming here. Uh, going to Ukraine, first of all, was an um, experience. Many people were asking me, are you crazy to go there? It's so dangerous. And I was actually 100 kilometers away from the war, where the war takes place. I was just less than 100 kilometers away. But I don't know, I had a strong belief that everything will be okay. And it was actually. The war is happening only in this uh, small area where they have uh, made uh, republics and uh, they have separated themselves. And uh, in the other places, Everything seems quite uh, peaceful, very, very peaceful actually. But people are really divided. People are half of the half of them are standing pro-Russian, and the half of them are pro-American. And actually, what I experienced there, and because I had the chance to talk with many of them, I was asking every single person from my friends, the athletes, to the taxi drivers or in the plane, the Ukrainian people, psychologists, doctors. <clears throat> What I experienced and felt is that um, it was one big manipulation of the two big powers and the victim in the middle is just uh, Ukraine, the normal population. Uh, America was playing their games and then Russia had to, in a way, to protect themselves. So this is the way things are right now in there. Um, gibt es irgendwelche Fragen, die ihr gern an Blago stellen möchtet zu diesem Thema? Irgendjemand? Wir können, wir haben heute nur das Mikrofon mit dem, äh, wir können nicht direkt zu euch kommen, aber gibt es irgendeine Frage? Nicht. Okay, so dann, ähm, Blago ist zugleich auch ein, nicht nur ein sehr guter Sportler, sondern er ist auch ein sehr, sehr, eine tiefe Seele. Und äh, er hat viel Erfahrung überall auf der Welt und er hat sehr schöne Geschichten erzählt. Er war jetzt gerade im Sommer in Indonesien, glaube ich, um dort zu trainieren. And uh, maybe you could tell us about your experiences with people there, because it's so different. Yeah, first of all, I forgot to tell something about uh, Ukraine. Going to Ukraine, it was my first time there. And actually the people I met, all of them, without exception, they were so warm, so welcoming, so Uh, open-hearted, so simple in a way, and uh, I got back actually back to Bulgaria like 15 or 20 years ago when uh, Bulgarian people were also that welcoming and that uh, warm-hearted. As for Indonesia, Indonesia was an uh, experience of itself. Uh, it's the biggest Muslim country, as probably most of you know, but what I experienced there was a uh, a big spiritual uh, journey. It was uh, amazing to see all those people from different religions living together in peace and uh, of course not always there have been problems but they are really really making their uh, way up in the race, race um, no, no ra racism. I mean they are living in a total, in a real real peace and everybody is uh, uh, very friendly, very open-hearted, they're really welcoming to strangers, which is very, which is something uh, not that common in Europe. Everybody there is very happy to meet new people, very happy to invite new people in their houses, to take care of someone. It's just, it, it was just amazing. I was just a foreigner there and uh, I was accepted as one of them. And uh, having the chance to travel a lot around the world, and I've lived in Germany, I've been a lot in Indonesia, maybe almost eight months, also Malaysia, China, Korea, and 
what I see, there is a big difference between... Uh, it's not about the spirituality of people in Indonesia. No, they are not that spiritual at all. They don't meditate, they don't... How to say, you know... They are just people. They are just nice people. And that's a... It's a big, big crash, big... Uh, big gap when I come back from, in the, from Asia, come back to Europe. It's uh, the first 10 day, days it takes me a lot, a lot effort to come back to the, to the European reality. And um, yesterday I, I met one of my neighbors, she's an Austrian girl, she cut my hair, she's a very famous hair stylist, you can see that. <laughs> um, and you know what she asked me? It's very strange that somebody from this building that we are living is coming to my place. I say, why that? She said, I've been living here for nine years and no one has ever knocked on my door or come into my flat or asked for anything. You're the first one. I said, believe me, it will not be the last time that I do that. And uh, that was actually, that's one of the biggest shocks for me that I experienced in, uh, in Vienna, in Austria, slightly in Germany as well. But I guess Germans are, I think Germans are a bit more open. Uh, what I feel here, there is some kind of um, unacceptance for uh, towards other people. People, everybody is so closed in, in their own lives and in their own shells, so that they don't pay attention to the, even to the neighbor, to the people beside you. And how about, how can we care about the, the people on the other side of, of the world, or how can we save or help them? if they are in need. That's, uh, that's something I would like to appeal to, to all we Viennese people, or to everybody who is here, that we could try to be a little bit more human, a bit more people, because that's what it takes to be, that's what it means to be people, to be human. We have to, to care about all living creatures in the world. Um, ich kenne Bulgarien noch vor der Öffnung zum Westen. Ich war mal dort, ich habe damals in Mailand gelebt, einer sehr, sehr harten Businessstadt, wirklich hart, und äh, bin für eine Woche nach Bulgarien gefahren zu Freunden und bin mir vorgekommen wie eingebettet in Watte. Die Menschen waren so großzügig, so offen, so lieb. Ähm, keine Sekunde hat man sich allein gefühlt, verletzt gefühlt, irgendetwas. Und ich bin dann äh, wieder nach Mailand zurückgeflogen und bin aus dem Flugzeug gestogen, gest gestiegen und habe eigentlich geglaubt, ich steige in eine Luft, die wie Beton ist. Drei Tage habe ich gebraucht, um mich wieder an diese Härte von Mailand zu gewöhnen, das harte Leben dort. Es, also man kann das wirklich physisch und psychisch und seelisch absolut spüren. Die Bulgaren haben ein wunder wunderschönes Herz und äh, sind wirklich sehr, sehr offen und menschlich. Aber äh, Blago hat mir erzählt, dass es jetzt auch eine Veränderung gegeben hat. Ja, ich denke, in den letzten uh, 20 Jahren, seit den Veränderungen, die have, have been, have been started in Bulgarien gestartet haben, gibt es natürlich eine große Veränderung in der Mentalität der Menschen. Jeder versucht, weil es kein no Sozialismus mehr gibt, also jeder versucht, seinen eigenen Weg zu as good, as, be as, as fast, as far as he can. So, uh, you know, we are becoming animals in a way. Everybody is eating everybody, the other one. But what I see and what Bulgaria is actually most famous about, it's our yogurt our, and our vegetables, of course. And what I can share with you something very, very uh, sad. It's that uh, last two years, two years ago, there have been uh, law. They, t they wanted to in, uh, implement a law in Bulgaria so that we cannot use our own vegetable seeds. We could only import or buy the, the foreign uh, tomato uh, seeds or uh, whatever vegetable seeds. And actually it makes no sense because our tomatoes, it, it's like as if you're in paradise. It's such a feeling. It's so delicious, you know. And uh, that's something so sad. It's also about, uh, they, they said to people they cannot make their own cheese or they cannot they or, uh, make their own yogurt. Or, and it's something very, very sad. Um, 
I hope, I don't know how is it right now in Bulgaria because I'm very seldom going there. I hope there are also people, I'm sure there are people who are awakened and who will not let these things happen. But um, as for the people, they have changed a lot. Yeah, it's, Bul Bulgarians are no more the people as they used to be. And uh, just today I, was, I got to a thought that um, since Bulgaria has joined the European Union and uh, following the global politics in general, I think uh, we are just thinking about this uh, materialistic development and we are forgetting about the normal human being rules, the normal humanity rules. And uh, if it takes, if it takes, what does it, I was asking myself, what does it take to become rich country and powerful country? And I was like, if, they, if the answer is to, to lose all, all your moral rules and human humanity rules, then I'd rather be poor. So, thank you very much, Plago. Uh, he has, er geht jetzt zu seinem Training, er arbeitet auch noch am Abend, früh und Abend. Und ja, vielleicht kommst du wieder mal, würde uns sehr freuen. Yeah, I will come for sure next Monday. <laughs> Goodbye, have a nice evening. <laughs>